Well, good morning, everyone. Let's stand up. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Test, 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 test. Testing, one, two. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Why don't you go ahead and greet one another before we get started. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time we have. We come to worship you, to praise you, and to glorify thy holy name. We come to study the word of God together, to express our love to you as we congregate together. And may our praise and worship go, go up before your throne of sweet incense in Jesus' name. And everyone in agreement said, amen. Hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. Say he is alive. He's living in me. Woo, glory. I was buried beneath my shame. And who could carry that kind of my tomb till I met you and I was breathing but not alive and all my failures I tried to hide it was my tomb
Praise God. my cross you bore so I could live in the freedom you died for now my life is yours and I will say of your goodness forevermore worthy is your name Jesus, you deserve the praise, worthy is your name, worthy is your name, Jesus, you deserve the praise, worthy is your name. shame is gone I stand amazed at your love undeniable Your grace goes on and on and I will sing of your goodness for it worthy worthy is your name Jesus Your glory fills this place You alone deserve our praise You're the name above all names Be exalted now in the heavens As your glory fills this place You alone deserve our praise You're the name above all names Be exalted now in the heavens As your glory Fills this place, you alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above. Sing it again. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. Deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens as we go this place. Here we go.
you long
Don't make me run around this place. I might do it. I hope you would too. Thank you, Lord. He's worth running, jumping, dancing, shouting, getting wild and crazy for. My goodness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Love to worship you. I love to worship you. you as head of the church, Jesus, our Lord and Savior. We worship you, for there's none like you. We glorify your name. We praise you. We praise you. And we worship you. And everyone said, Amen. You may be seated. Let's receive the morning tithes and offerings at this time. 
you need an offering envelope, let the ushers know they'll help you with that. Sing it again. Worship you, we worship you, worship you. Worship you, we worship you. We love to worship you. We love to worship you. We love to worship you. Lord, we love to worship you. Oh, we love to worship you. you so much for giving us Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. For you have anointed him and appointed him as high priest over our tithes and offerings. Therefore, Jesus, as our high priest, we bring our tithes and offerings to you, and we ask you to set it before our Heavenly Father and to worship him with them. Let him know that it's come from us and we love him and appreciate him and adore him. Now, Father, look down from heaven and bless us, your people, according to your word. I thank you for the authority you've given us over the evil one, and we do exercise that authority to your glory, honor, and praise. And I thank you also, Father, that we can come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and help in a time of need. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Say it with me. Money comes more than enough to pay all the bills, to abundantly spread the gospel, and buy the things that I want. In Jesus' name, I claim tither's rights. In Jesus' name, I claim the hundredfold principle on all my giving. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Say this with me. God takes good care of me all the time. Say it with me. I am extremely healthy. I have, a, I have a sound mind. My mind is clear and sharp. In Jesus' name. My eyes are clear and sharp. Every organ, every gland, every cell of my body functions normally. In Jesus' name. And I forbid any malfunctions in my body. In the name of Jesus. And I'm always careful to give God all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Let's sing that one more time. That's a beautiful song. You can stand if you want to, just to worship Him, worship Him, worship Him. Worship you. Oh, I love to worship you. Yes, I love to worship you. I love to worship you. I love to worship you. Time. Oh Lord, I love to worship you. 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 I love to worship you
worship you Yes, I love to worship you I love to worship you I love to worship you Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah Blessed be the name of the Lord You may be seated Thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Well, I'm going to teach a little while. Say thank God for the music team. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, this is a day we celebrate and our the resurrected Savior, our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just a couple things before I get into the Word is our deepest sympathy to Rhonda Miller and the passing of her husband, Daryl, the other day. He will be missed. To her and her family and friends, we, we sympathize with you. Then I wanted to thank also the HELPS Ministry. They uh, pitched in and helped me out, as well as helping out with the funeral and all those things that I appreciate very much. I'll have more to say about that some other time, but you remember... How Jesus said, those that left houses or homes and husbands and wives and so forth. You know, we classify that under the missionary, and, it, and that's true. But every time you leave your business, your activity, or your plan to come and help someone else, you left them, and God sees that. And the blessings of God will flow into you because of that. As you, many of you know that Teresa broke her ankle here a while back and she's on crutches and, and she doesn't get around real well yet. She's still learning how to operate the crutches. <laughs> but she'll be back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more quick announcement before I forget. Stephen Rattold will be here next week. Next Sunday morning, looking forward to that. There's some things stirring in me. Uh, I can't hardly wait to be able to share some things with you. I don't know what all they all are, but I know that inside there's a stirring about some things that, and uh, well, I don't want to get into it. I'll start sharing down those, those lines. But I, today I, I'm going to deal with our resurrected Savior. Amen. This is why we're here in celebration. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Well, while we were praying this morning, the Spirit of God dealt with me to start here and work backwards. So let's go to Ephesians, the first chapter. Very familiar portion of Scripture. We I teach on this, and I love this portion of Scripture, and it's one we can meditate upon and gain a lot of information, revelation, and help from heaven if we'll get these things on the inside of us. Dr. Hagen prayed this prayer every day for, uh, he, needed, he recognized he needed wisdom and so forth. He prayed it every time. Uh, every day and many times in a day. He, his, the parsonage was next to the church and he'd go over there and he'd open the Bible and he'd quote these verses. There's a lot in here that we can glean from. And he said he did this for about six months and he said all of a sudden he started realizing he, he, he had more insight into the things of God than he did before. So let's start in verse 17. 
that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory. See, the first thing, this is a, Paul, a prayer that Paul prayed, and uh, it's a spirit-led prayer. And he gives God the glory first before he gets into some other things. The, he says, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you a spirit of wisdom. How many of you know, no matter how wise you think you are, we can all use more wisdom. Some need to understand it's wise to watch what they say, how they say it, and even if they should say it at all. Wisdom. But there's wisdom in the things of God and in how, how things are, are uh, to be applied. I remember uh, a minister, I, I could name him, but I'm not going to, we're on live stream, but uh, he said he was a pastor at that time. And there was a young man that came up to him and says, I can, you ought to just turn this church over to me because I can preach better than you. And he did have some issues with uh, being able to speak in front of a crowd and so forth. He said to this young man, he said, you may be able to speak better than I can, but there's a big difference. I'm anointed by God to do it. And you're not. Wisdom. Wisdom in life. Wisdom in the family. Wisdom in, in marriage. Wisdom in business. We need God's wisdom. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. That the eyes, and there's so much in this, but I, I, there's a portion here I have to go to. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you, that you may know what is the hope of His calling and what is the riches of His glory of His inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. That resurrection power. Eric, will you play that thing right now? That there's a little caption. I'm going to just stop for a moment and let this minister to you. That resurrection power of Jesus Christ. It's Friday. Jesus is praying. Peter is asleep. Judas is betrayed. But Sunday's coming. It's Friday. Pilots struggle. The council is conspired. The crowd is vilified. They don't even know that Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are running like sheep without a shepherd. Mary's crying. Peter is denied. But they don't know that Sundays are coming. It's right. The Romans beat my Jesus. They roll him in scar. They crown him with thorns. But they don't know that Sundays come. It's right. See Jesus walking the cow. His blood dripping. His body stumbling. And his spirit's burden. But you see, it's only pride. Sunday's come. It's Friday. The world's winning. People are sinning. And evil's grinning. It's right. The soldiers nailed my Savior's hands to the cross. They nailed my Savior's 
to the cross. And then they raised him up next to criminals. It's right. But let me tell you something. Sunday's coming. It's right. The disciples are questioning what has happened to their king. And the Pharisees are celebrating that their scheming has been achieved. But they don't know. It's only Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. He's hanging on the cross, feeling forsaken by his father, left alone and dying. Can nobody see him? Oh, it's Friday. But Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The earth is church. The sky grows dark. My king yields his spirit. It's Friday. Hope is lost. Death has won. Sin has come. And Satan just a laugh. Jesus is buried. A soldier stands guard, and a rock is rolled into place. But it's fried. It is only fried. Sunday is a cover. Isn't that powerful? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Going back to the day of beginnings, Adam and Eve sinned. You know the story. But God had a plan. And it took 4,000 years of God showing his people how he thinks and the ways that uh, he loves and then Jesus came. Go with me to Luke, the fourth chapter. Luke chapter four. Now Jesus is born, of course, that's what we celebrate around Christmas, whether he's actually born on that day or not. We don't, there's different uh, ideas about that. The point is he was born. He grew in stature and wisdom. And then come a day, he was anointed by God. And chapter four, verse one, and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned to Jordan, was led by the spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days did eat nothing. And when he were, they were ended afterward, he hungered. And the devil said unto him, if thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. There's some things stirring in me about the things that, uh, not to give glory to or honor to Satan in any way, but to expose him in all his tactics. He comes here to Jesus maybe at one of his weakest moments. He was hungry after being uh, without food for 40 days. And Satan comes to tempt him, to deceive him. It worked on Adam and Eve, but it isn't working on Jesus. Praise God. And Jesus answered and said, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but every word of, every word of God. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain showed him un, all the kingdoms of the world in a moment in time. Well, it, they belonged to Satan. Adam and Eve turned it over to him. Adam and Eve had control, but when he, they disobeyed God and took the, the forbidden fruit, they turned it over to Satan, and he was the God of this world. He made him the God of this world. And Jesus, being tempted of, of Satan, now some say he was never tempted. Yes, he was. The Bible just says he was tempted. I had a minister one time say, Jesus was never tempted. And I, said, I thought, well, 
The word says he was. So what's, what's the problem? Amen. He says that is it, is it written, man shall not live by bread alone, and dev, the devil taking up in a high mountain. Now, whether this is a literal mountain or just a place in the, the thought process, overlooking everything, seeing all the works of his hands and, and the authority that he has, boastfully saying, I'll give this all to you. And the devil taking up in a high mountain showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said, all this power will I give thee and glory of them that they, it is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will, I will give it. He couldn't have said that unless there was truth in that. He couldn't have tempted Jesus without it. Now, the devil is a liar, but he's, he's telling the truth in this particular portion, just trying to get Jesus to succumb to it. But Jesus didn't fall for it. Verse 7, if thou therefore worship me, all that shall be thine. And Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And he brought him to Jerusalem, set him on a pinnacle in the, of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from this hence. And it, for it is written, he gives his angels charge over thee and keep thee. The devil likes to use a little bit of scripture to tempt people. Beware of that, especially this year. Beware of how the devil likes to deceive people. He can't get us to believe things unless there's a little bit of truth in it. And in their hands they shall bear thee, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answered and said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. For a season. He found out that he could not get Jesus by direct contact. So now he had to use other people to deceive them into believing that Jesus was an enemy of God. He moved upon the religious order of that day and so stirred them up that Jesus became the spotless lamb to the slaughter. The Bible talks about that. And as Jesus succumbed to and, and his ministry and did all the things he was supposed to do, it come upon a day the devil tried to kill him in different ways and it never worked. You remember the time they tried to push him off a cliff and that didn't work? He just walked through the midst of them and escaped. But Jesus was anointed by God as a man, not with the privilege of the throne powers, but as a man. And there was things that Jesus didn't know. Remember John the Baptist being beheaded? He didn't know about it until his disciples came and told him about it. So he was anointed of man. He was here for a purpose, anointed of God. And he went forth and he revealed some things about life and, and prayer and Satan and our authority in this earth. But Jesus, on that great day, it come a time about three and a half years in his ministry. It was time for him to pay the price for mankind. Thank God for it. Thank God for it. Because it, it, had he not gone to the cross, the best we could ever hope for was Abraham's bosom, the upper regions of hell. A place the Bible talks about as paradise, but uh, it wasn't close to God, and God wanted us close to Him. Hallelujah. Now that region is empty. Thank God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
But Jesus yielded himself. And he started to pay the price. And you know the story of in the Garden of Gethsemane. And Jesus, he told the disciples, pray. Because it was a heavy on him. And he says, God, if this cup can pass from me, let it pass. Oh, I'm so glad we're saved. I'm so glad. But Jesus paid an awesome price. And he comes back to his disciples and he says, couldn't you even pray an hour? How about you and I? Can we pray an hour? Get close to God? We're going to need to be close to God in these last days. Listening to him, getting direction from him. There's strategic times. There was a preacher that I have great respect for. And he was telling about a preacher that he had great respect for. He said he was given to dreams or some, visions, something like that at different times. And he said, God took him up to the second heaven, not to the third heaven, but the second heaven. And he seen people dying all over. And he said, 97% of them went to hell. 3% went to heaven. Think of that. 97, of, of that time frame that he was watching, people dying on earth, a spiritual vision, 97% went to hell. There's some Christians, they think they're going to go to heaven, but they're not paying the price to be a Christian. When we're a Christian, we talk different, we act different, we go different places, and we stay away from a lot of different other places. We talk different, we think different, we hang around different people. But Jesus, he paid price. In the garden, they arrested him, and he began to close his mouth answered very few questions. They put the thorns on his head and he began to bleed. They scourged him. They beat him with the, the whippings. And the, the whipping, the way I understand it, the way the story is told, had rocks or glass-like particles on the end and it would every time they whipped him, it would tear his flesh. More blood was shed. Now, we don't like to talk about blood these days and the shedding of blood, but in God, there's something very precious about the blood. There's power in the blood. There's power in the blood to sanctify, to cleanse, to redeem, to justify, to forgive. To reconcile and to perfect us and to forgive us. And those people that say, you don't need to uh, ask for forgiveness. Everyone is forgiven. If everyone is forgiven, why do we even have the Bible? We have to do go to God by an act of our will. Satan likes to push and shove and, and, and force things. But God says, I am here to give you life and life more abundantly, but you have to come to me and accept it on my terms. But Jesus, he became the lamb for the slaughter. Like I said, they whipped him and by his stripes we were healed. It was a spiritual thing as well as a natural thing. That took place. How do we know? Because Second Peter or First Peter two twenty four says, "By his stripes ye were healed." The stripes on his back, but he was still shedding blood. Then he had to carry the cross in such a weakened state he couldn't manage it all the way, and he had to have help. 
Like the video was shown, they nailed Jesus to the cross, those crucifixion nails. Now the hole had to have been dug, however deep it may have been. But think of the, the weight of the cross in and of itself, and then the body of Jesus on the cross, hoisting that up. I don't know how, how many people it took to uh, straighten that cross up so it would drop in that hole. Now think about when it hit that hole, the, the pain that Jesus must have suffered with his hands and his feet when that post or that cross hit the bottom of that hole. It, the weight would have just jarred and the pain. Then it come a time. He said, uh, the Bible says he gave up the spirit. We are a spirit, we have a soul, and we live in a body. It wasn't finished. The Abrahamic covenant was finished. Jesus cried, cried out and said, it is finished. But it was the Abrahamic covenant that was finished. There's a new one about to take place. And Jesus hung on that cross and gave up the ghost. But it wasn't over yet. He paid a physical price, but Adam's sin went into as far as the holy of holies in heaven. There was a spiritual price that had to have been paid, and Satan didn't know about it. He thought all the time. He knew, uh, see, he, he was at war with God in heaven at one time, and he had such deceptive measures, he deceived a third of the angels with him to be kicked out, and God just kicked him out of heaven and he landed on earth. Jesus said, I beheld him like lightning fallen from heaven to earth, my paraphrase. But Satan thought, I've got, I got conquered Adam and Eve, God's creation. Now here's the second one to the throne and I've got him. I got the religious people so stirred up, they don't know what they're doing. And they hung the spotless Son of God on the cross, and now he's going to hell. I'm taking him to hell. Jesus became sin for our sin. We couldn't do this of ourselves. We needed a spotless lamb for the slaughter. Jesus went to hell. The Bible says there was torment, torture, and had Satan known he would have never crucified the Lord of glory? I guess not, because on the third day, God points the scepter of righteousness at him and says, Oh God, thy throne is forever. And that's why we have this resurrection power according to Ephesians, the first chapter. He wants us to know about this resurrection power that he used to raise Jesus from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. Amen. Hallelujah. We are ever grateful for what Jesus has done. And never forget this. Hell lasts just as long as heaven. There is no redemption in hell. This time on, in the earth, in this time in the flesh, is the only time you and I have the ability to reconcile things with God. Because if we do not take care of it on this side, once death or we, uh, things end on this planet, it's over the decisions have been made. We won't have a choice. Those that went to hell, just like the rich man, he wishes everything he would have conducted himself right before God. And it was so much torment, he, he went and cried out across the great gulf to Abraham in his bosom and said, send some of my people back to uh, talk to my brethren because then they'll listen to someone that's raised from the dead. And I'll tell you how powerful this is because Jesus said, if they won't listen to someone that's 
Like Moses who gave the law, they won't listen to someone that was raised from the dead. We need to believe the word. Hallelujah. But Jesus, God sent, uh, pointed the scepter of righteousness at him. Now this is an all condensed story. There's much more we could share about these things and events. But this is Resurrection Sunday and we're, we're just hitting the high spots of it. To, it's not just a holiday. Why, well, we got more holidays than you can shake a stick at. Everybody wanting to go on vacation for one thing. Well, it's St. Patrick's Day, give me a day off. It, it's uh, some other day. It's Columbus Day. Let me have a day off. Let me go uh, do something. It, now, there's nothing wrong with some of these things, but you can get overbearing, overdo it. And, uh, hallelujah. But Jesus, he stretched his spiritual muscles and he took the keys of death and hell away from Satan. And God gave Jesus authority and Jesus turned around and gave it to the church. Hallelujah. And he expects you and I to be as policemen upon this earth and exercise that authority instead of, well, God's in control. He'll take care. No, he, he's up there waiting for you and I to take control of some things in the name of Jesus, in prayer, in wisdom, and in resurrection power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As only he can do. Now, we have to get guidance from him. We are to be led by the Holy Ghost. And thank God, Jesus went to, after he was raised up, he went to pick up his body. He entered back into his body. He must have picked up his blood. How we, it, The video of this is going to be marvelous to watch when we get to heaven. And we think we might know a lot we're going to class when we get to heaven. There's some things we, we should have known and were, were available to us. We just didn't see it. But Jesus picked up his blood and Mary Magdalene meets him at the, the, the tomb and Jesus, now there's more to the story, but I'm paraphrasing. Jesus says, don't touch me. I have yet to go to the, the Father. He had to sprinkle his blood on the Holy of Holies. That's as far reaching as Adam's authority went. And then the, the process began to setting up the church. Then there was a government, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastors and teachers. And then, then the body of Christ as a whole, he gave them authority over the evil one. And we, he expects you and I to operate in this realm of authority. But you and I must not be ignorant concerning spiritual matters. That resurrection power is available to us and he wants you and I to know about it and to use it according to wisdom, not frivolously or proudfully or arrogantly, but with great humility in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we celebrate this time also with communion. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. And we're going to receive communion together. I wrote down a number of verses here in, to share with you, but it seems like this is the way we need to go. Now, Paul is preaching to the church at Corinth, very spiritual brunch, very spiritual church. I don't care how spiritual you and I are, we all need correction at different times to keep us 
on the right pathway, out of the ditch on the right and the left. Just read, and I, I've shared these verses with you numerous times, taught out of them, and I probably will again, the first three chapters of Revelation. There's seven different churches there where Jesus uh, gave a, a sermon to uh, and about these churches and the, the things that they were doing. And he said on a number of occasions, I'm not pleased, my paraphrase, I'm not pleased with you in this. Meaning this, I want you to straighten up and get your act together. <laughs> Amen. But we remember this. Now, Paul is writing to the church at Corinth. And once again, it's a very spiritual church and thank God for it. But they were making some mistakes. They were having communion together, but they were making mistakes in it. And he says, Let's take up in verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which I also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body that is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. Now, on this Resurrection Sunday, also known as Easter, Bunny rabbits have nothing to do with this. It has everything to do with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who actually went to hell for you and I and paid a price for you and I. And he says, I, I, I've got something from God I'm going to deliver to you. He says, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. And we remember all the things that Jesus did for us in his death, burial, and resurrection. And it, not all of it was very, and a lot of it was not very pretty. And a lot of it was very painful for Jesus Christ. But oh, when Sunday came, like the video said, when Sunday came, he rose. And it was worth it. He gladly did it. And the Bible even talks about God the Father. He was glad to send Jesus on behalf of the people that he loves. I want you to know God loves you and I. With more love than you and I could even visualize or imagine. But he says, take eat, this is my body. His body was broken, weakened, tortured, beaten up, slashed, smacked around, thorns on his head. And he bled with the, thorn, uh, the crucifixion nails. Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Say it, for me. This do in remembrance of me. It is not some religious thing that we're doing. It is not just some ceremony. There is spiritual power. There is spiritual significance in taking communion. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped. This is a cup of the New Testament in my blood. This do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as oft as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, Whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Now listen to me. They were all born again Christians. Paul's writing to the church. They were all worthy. But they were partaking of the communion service in an unworthy manner. And God was not pleased with it. And he had Paul write to the church and tell them, I'm not pleased with you in this. You're not understanding some things, and I'm going to make it clear to you. 
He says, but let a man examine himself and so let him eat that bread. Now you can see in, in this testimony, in this scripture writing, the humility that we have to take toward one another. Let a man examine himself and so let him eat that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily or in an unworthy manner, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself or bringing judgment to yourself, not discerning the Lord's body. Yes, we need to discern all the things that we explained and, and the scriptures that came out this morning and the video that was shown, uh, all the things that took place on G with Jesus' body. But we find out from chapter 10, he's talking also about the body of Christ, you and I together, you and I with other Christians, no matter what label they have over the church door. If they're Christian, we're brothers to, and sisters together. And he says, let a man examine himself and so let him eat that bread and drink that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation or judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you and many sleep or that dies before their time. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Get to know Jesus Christ in a, you know, the Bible talks about the fellowship of the Father, the fellowship of the Son, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. There's always been something in me. I want to be close to God. I wanted that fellowship. Some don't even think about it. Just going to church is not going to get you to heaven. You've got to know Jesus Christ personally, live for him, act like you're a Christian, talk like you're a Christian, uh, do business like a Christian. Amen. 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 Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, a time of great celebration for the body of Christ. Had it not been for what Jesus did for us, we would have no hope. We'd still be sacrificing bulls and goats and, and, and going through all the ceremonies and the best we could ever have is that portion above hell. But no, God was not satisfied. He wanted us with him in heaven. Hallelujah. Say it with me, I'm going to heaven. Whatever I have to do to prepare my heart and my mind, I am going to do it because I do not want to go to hell. I am determined to pay the price. Whatever I have to do, change whatever I have to change, I am going to heaven. My name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And it will not be re released or, re excuse me, erased. I will do those things in God's sight that it will not be an issue. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, those that are going to serve communion, would you come on up and start that out? And I'll share a little bit more, I believe, about this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, Him crucified. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You see, we can celebrate, we get together and have meals and so forth on Easter. There's nothing wrong with that. But let's not forget Jesus Christ and the reason for it. Hallelujah. 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 Every eye closed, every head bowed, and say, I've never received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. 
And I want to make sure I go to heaven. I do not want to miss out. If you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart and receive him as Lord, I ask you to just simply raise your hands toward heaven and we'll pray a simple prayer. I'm not going to embarrass anyone. I see no hands. So everyone is born again. Praise God for that. You can open your eyes. Hallelujah. Say with me, Jesus Christ is my Lord. I have received him as my Lord and Savior. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He is my Savior divine. Hallelujah. Now, you know the routine, you come down the center aisles and work your way back around and, and we'll all partake of communion together. So come on up. this time in reflection. But let a man examine himself.
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, your word says for us to examine ourselves. So we do examine ourselves and we ask you to forgive us all our sin and iniquity, known or unknown. Faults, failures, mistakes, ignorance. But now unto him that's able to keep us from failing and falling or stumbling, we thank you. And with this verse, you said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. We do remember you, Jesus. Remember, we remember your death, burial, and resurrection. We also remember the importance of one another in the body of Christ. So we do partake of the bread in Jesus' name. Let's all partake together. He said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do is off you drink it in remembrance of me. Jesus, we remember your shed blood. We also recognize and receive the power that's in your blood. Therefore, in Jesus' name, in remembrance to you, we partake of the blood. Everyone partake together. Father, I thank you for the precious body and blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we partake and have partaken of your body and your blood. And I thank you for the healing in your blood, the strength, the cleansing, the help from heaven. We are your people and we're led by your spirit in all affairs of life and ministry. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Hallelujah. If you uh, have your cups, bring it to the aisle. The ushers will help you with that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 Well, I'm going to let you out a little early. You can check your roast. Make sure it's not burning by the time you get home. Hallelujah. Let's all stand up. I believe I'm going to close today. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Father, I thank you for your precious people and all that you're doing in their lives. And may they acknowledge all that you do in their lives, giving you the glory, honor, and praise in and through it all. And as they go their separate ways, I thank you for giving your angels charge over them, keeping them in all their ways. I thank you that they're healed and not sick, strong and not weak, and you cause them to prosper in everything they set their hands to do. And all those that may be watching by live stream, we speak blessings upon you, healing to your bodies, strength to your mind, soundness of mind in every way. Angels in charge over you as well, in Jesus' name, keeping you by the power of God. And everyone said, amen. You're free to go. God bless you.